Welcome back to the show. I'm Dan Shaheen, and today uh, we continue our exploration into the X-Men's Dawn of X event and the all-new spate of titles that have come out, including today's Fallen Angels number one. Uh, let's take a look on the inside today on Comic Book News. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the show. Today, uh, we're going to talk about Fallen Angels number one, the latest in the Dawn of X series. But wait, it's actually not the latest. I made a mistake and I reviewed X-Men number two before I had read Fallen Angels number one. They both came out the same uh, day this week and I uh, jumped right to the one I was looking forward to the most, X-Men. Um, turns out it didn't really matter that much, right? And uh, let, let's... Uh, Take a look in the Million Dollar Comic Camera file. Okay, here we go. Million Dollar Comics Cam Fallen Angels number one. We've got uh, writing by Brian Hill, art by Simon Kuzdransky, uh, and colors by Frank Darmada. Now, okay, I'm going to be real. I'm not the hugest fan of this art style. It appears to me like the artist is using a lot of photo reference, which in and of itself is not that big of a deal, but it really looks like this artist heavily leans on this. If I'm not mistaken, this is the same artist who was recently doing the Punisher series, and I had a lot of qualms with uh, some of his uh, rendering and storytelling choices. But uh, let's soldier on, shall we? Um, we start off with a little bit of just crazy action on the... Uh, Tokyo Subway. So we've got this character we don't really know anything about, except she's got a, a butterfly tattoo. She attaches this sort of uh, thingamajiggy to her head, and then she just goes caca cuckoo, and she starts busting off on people and murdering the driver and says uh, only one word, apoth, uh, before, I guess, derailing the train, killing thousands, whatever. Anyway, that's our intro to Fallen Angels, number one piece in our time. Uh, mutants around the world are flocking to the island nation of Krakoa for safety, security, and to be part of the first mutant society. New bonds are forged among mutant kind as old wounds heal, but the drums of war still beat for some, including featured in this issue, Psylocke, Magneto, Mr. Sinister, Cable, X-23, and Captain Britain. Now, uh, longtime X-Men fans will remember the connection between Psylocke and Captain Britain, being that the original character named Psylocke was Betsy Braddock, who, uh, after going through the Siege Perilous uh, with X-Men, apparently, uh, body was transferred from a, a, a young Asian lady who was locked sort of in there and had to watch everything that played out and had no control over her body, and uh, that plays into her characterization here in this here book uh fallen angels number one bushido bushido is what is that the japanese like samurai code of honor and there's a lot of uh J asian and in particular japanese culture reference throughout here as you would expect as the characters of japanese descent um so it starts with sort of a dream psylocke she's in krakoa She's meditating or something. She's dreaming. And suddenly uh, it goes really wild. Somebody uh, somebody starts saying, you are not dreaming, Psylocke. Listen, you have an enemy. His name, Your enemy is named Apoth. You must kill a god. Okay? And then we get into a little bit here about uh, Apoth is the Tetragrammaton, the new name of God. I had to look that up. The Tetragrammaton was what's sometimes called Yahweh. It's like a four-letter Hebrew symbol that's supposedly the unpronounceable name of God. So an apoth itself is a shortening of uh, apotheosis, which itself is the process of deification uh, and also of death, like so, or, or or the climax of something is also its apotheosis, and that's where apoth comes from. So, looks a little like somebody took a philosophy and religion class and uh, took some of these uh, fancy vocabulary words and 
started to fly out of the supervillains. But I guess that's how it always works, right? Anyway, next. <clears throat> the House of M. This is Magneto's house inside of uh, Krakoa. And now, this is where the only bit where continuity or order comes into play at all here. In that, this is out of order. You're supposed to read this before you read um, X-Men, supposedly. But it makes zero difference. They also mention here that Xavier is dead and uh, and Magneto is now kind of in charge in his stead and he's bummed, but he's not going to let her leave. They've locked down the island since Xavier's assassination, but he says, you can go talk to Mr. Sinister, right? So that's, that's it. That's all we get to hear about Xavier. We don't know what his status is. I mean, we know he's dead. They're mourning him. But we also know that death doesn't really mean anything in this new X-Men paradigm, right? I've talked about it before, but it is dramatic death. So we're going to, this Dawn of X, I, I, I think is going to, um, by the end of it, we'll, we'll, we'll see an end to this whole Immortal Mutants thing, I hope. Um, it's li what's leading me to start calling this Yawn of X instead of Dawn of X. Because if you can't die, there ain't no stakes, right? So anyway, um, uh, Psylocke goes to Mr. Sinister, who sort of talks to him. And he's like a, just a troublemaker and a real like uh, clever fella. And he's like, uh, oh, do you want it? Do you, don't you really hate Captain Britain? Don't you hate Betsy Braddock? You were trapped in that body and you couldn't do anything. And and she kind of reveals, yeah, she she is, she does kind of hate her. And like, if she could kill her, would you kill her? If you killed her, how would you kill her? And he says, she says the same way I kill anyone, quickly. Okay, badass bad girl, right? That's what this book is about. It's about bad girl and bad girls. Uh, so this is the if you love your she, that 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 comic the you love your assassin chicks comics and you love x23 who's about to feature in here right the female badasses this might be the book for you um so anyway we get a flashback here where we see someone who is training Quanin. that's that's this psylocke's name she's also revealed that she's keeping the name psylocke like betsy kept uh uh what she kept is she's keeping the she's keeping the name Psylocke, that's her mutant name anyway, so that's that's cool. Um, anyway, when she was a kid, she was revealed that somebody who ever trained her said, you are a soft, a, a caterpillar, soft and ugly and useless, but you'll become a butterfly. I'll make you beautiful, right? And that's the first of a couple flashbacks that we get. Next, we get back to uh, Krakoa, X-Men Orgy Island, uh, and uh, Cable is hitting on X-23, and of course it quickly turns into a fight which i just think is probably mutant or superhero foreplay uh so they fight next 23 kind of takes her down kicks his ass and you know reveal uh talks more about like the theme that we're seeing develop in dawn of x is uh she says i don't feel anything because nothing matters mutants have never been this safe and safety sucks right last time wolverine said safe equals soft this is like, these are the characters that don't want to be safe. These are the outlaws, the rebels. This is fallen angels, including somewhat, I guess, Cable or baby junior Cable from the future who came back and killed the real Cable. I'm still not totally straight on that. I got to finish up my Cable research. But uh, anyway, that's what we've got. Young guy Cable hitting on X-23. X-23 clearly... You know, she wants to get out of the shadow of of her dad, Wolverine. That's what she says anyway. And she just doesn't like the safety. So she's like, I want to go help Psylocke. She wants to get off the island. I want to get off the island. I got to get out of here. This place is a bunch of squares. Um, so they head to Japan and we learn a little bit more. We start to learn about what was going on with that cybernetic thingamajiggy. It's apparently it's a digital cybernetic drug right that they're that uh they call overclock right like overclocking your pc for gaming or whatever uh this is instead of like sniffing or snorting or shooting you like you jack in and it digitally stimulates pleasure centers in your brain actually sounds kind of neat kind of like a novel idea i'll bet you it's been done before but i can't recall exactly when or where so all right at least it's better than a new typical super drug at least it's a i don't know 
It's a virtual drug. It's like the Bitcoin of heroin or something. Anyway, <clears throat> we get uh, we, and then we get to see the the, the that the girl who's on the train was using this overclock thing, and that she's got this butterfly tattoo, which is sort of a motif of this book, and that's meaningful to Psylocke who has another flashback and remembers when she was young, she had a baby taken from her and that baby has that tattoo, thus that crazy uh, super killer baby thing in the beginning. It looks like it's Psylocke's kid. Uh, Psylocke's a little upset about that. She's got X-23 here backing her up. They're taking down henchmen. Uh, yeah, They're doing their thing, their violence thing. And then we get a two-page... Uh, text piece about overclock. What is overclock? Probably didn't need two pages for it. Could have really done it in one. But it's not badly written, and it's pretty interesting. It's what I just talked about uh, as far as being the drugs. And they have quotes from like users and quotes from doctors and quotes from... As far as the text pieces that have not been written by Hickman, it's one of the better ones. Media takes some time to read. adds adds color to the story. I proof. All right, moving on. They they managed to track down from that little fight, uh, like the source of this drug or where they're testing the drug, uh, and we get to go there. And there's the kids, and one of them is like possessed here by Apoth, who's talking through him, and uh, and is like, "Look, uh, you're a coward. You kill children." Uh, Psylocke's going heavily into her own head and into her own space uh, and decides she comes back to the island, right? Uh, and tells Sinister, look, I'll bring you Apoth so you can do your thing. You want to find out what his deal is and do your thing where you steal DNA or whatever, and then I get to kill him, right? But I need a team to help me do this, and it's going to be X-23 and Cable and me, and they're going to do some more recruiting. And and she calls them caterpillars, glistening and soft. But I can make you butterflies. So here we are, Fallen Angels. Again, apologies that I did these out of order. But what the ep epiphany was here is that it doesn't really matter. They do tie together. But it's the barest thread of connecting tissue between these things that are, that are, that, that, where the order is not important at all, really. There was no difference between me reading this before or after X Men Two, really, um, and uh, and and that you don't have to. So if you're not enjoying one of these books, you cannot. You don't have to read it and feel like you're missing out on super critical pieces. You are missing out on little clues and bits and pieces that the completists and the hardcore out there are going to care about. But you know, you don't have to. This is more like what how collecting comics should be. You should be rewarded for buying more. You should be rewarded, but not punished for not buying everything. Okay, next, Butterfly, right? That's our symbol for Fallen Angels. Butterfly, next, Chrysalis, right? Tying right in with our motif. And, uh, okay, Fallen Angels number two, what, what, or number one. Sorry, what did we think about that? Um... Well, I thought the artwork was okay. I'm not a fan of the overly photographic reference stuff. I thought the storytelling, at first I didn't like it, but then eventually I, I, I kind of came around. It felt like a sort of Japanese horror movie-ish in tone and style. So heck, you know what? I'm, I, I'll stick around. I'll check out the number two and I'll give it a review for sure. Um, and uh, you know what? Who, who, speaking of sticking around... Uh, thank you for sticking around. If you stuck around this long, then uh, you must have liked this video. And if you like this video, you might like some of my other videos. So uh, click that subscribe button. Hey, if you want to get notified like instantaneously when I drop new videos, uh, uh, hit that little bell-shaped icon down there and you'll get notifications, right? So uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Oh, yes, and thank you for commenting. That's the most important and my favorite part of this channel is mixing it up in the comments section. So if you got something to say about Fallen Angels, you got something to say about uh, this channel, you got, hey, you got something to say about my dope Cerebus for Dictator t-shirt, 
Let's see it in the comments and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.